Howdy doody folks. My um my stream rate is a bit up and down. But I'm not going to restart the modem because if I do that it'd take ages to come back up. Um but welcome everyone. This is the first stream this week, carrying on from yesterday. Um Right, let yourselves known if you've joined us. What are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to carry on from where we were last night, basically. Got my tea. I've had a bit of a fun day. Um, not all of it to do with Rust code, thank goodness. Um, actually, did some soldering. Been making a whole bunch of these. These are the uh, uh, Black Ice MX um, carrier boards. Oh, it's upside down. Look. Mm -mm. So I've been making a bunch of those. I made somewhere between 20 and 30. I've got five of them that I need to just rework a bit. I've got a couple of them. Uh, solder blobs. And um, I've got my new soldering machine, which you can see over there. Ta da! Much, so much better than the old one that was playing up. So I can actually start soldering the pins up. Now each one of these, believe it or not, there's 120 pins to solder on there. So there's two surface mount connectors, which is 100 pins. But the through hole uh, side of things, there are just under 120. There's 100, 116, I think, uh, joints that have to be soldered for each board. And guess who solders them? Yes. Lucky old me, but it's a cinch with my new soldering iron, it's so much better. So much better. So, I had the boards, I've got the soldering iron, and I've started. And I had to do one anyhow, uh, I can't show you because I've got the logic analyzer in, but um, I didn't actually have a black ice MX carrier myself, I was using my old blackboard carrier, which is great, except I needed to tap into the um. Uh, SPI signals and I can't do that on the blackboard whereas um, on here on that bottom connector the male one you've got your uh, SWD connection which you need and it's also exposes the SCK mozzie and MISO it does not however expose the uh, the, the um, SS pin which is connected to the internal FPGA that's really for safety reasons stop people trying to hook SPI up to the same SS pin there's a separate CS pin but um, it makes it a bit of a pain but um, yeah we're going to be looking at that today um, so I needed to get one made up so I figured I'd do all the surface mount parts so I did about 30 uh, surface mount boards and now I've just got to do the manual soldering on them. What a joy. It can be uh, cathartic in some senses. Depends how many you've got to do and um, within what time frame. Might do some over the weekend when I get five minutes. So how is everyone? Hi, oh, hi, Laurie. By the way, I can see you there. Um, an eye post says, uh, "Funny thing is, you actually read the uh, read the chat out loud anyway, because he's currently on um, Discord, uh, not on the um, Twitch trap." <laughs> Twitch chat. That was beginning to sound like a tongue twister. 
Um, there, I think you can get a plugin for OBS that will read um, Discord. I've seen people using it. I, I haven't found it, though. I'd need to have a look at that. I'm really not in the green. It's up and down all the time. Hope I'm not. I hope my frame rate isn't terrible. I seem to be dropping a rather large number of frames. I don't think it's um, CPU bound. It's got to be Tintinet, I'm afraid. But let me know. Give me some feedback on that. So this is what part five, isn't it? Damn it, I forgot to update this. It'd be very confusing. Let me just update that. Um, right. Right, 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 right. Let us look at some code. So the problem we were having, well, the problem, the significant problem we were having, we were trying to use the um, Bitbang SPI, which sounded like a really good idea at the time. Uh, and I figured it'd be really easy. And if we were using it in main, it is quite easy to use. But as soon as you want to use it somewhere else, i.e. you need to pass the SPI um, to, you know, another structure or something, you have to know what the type is. Now, what the type is for SPI is really, really complicated. Or well, certainly for the Bitbang SPI, as we found out yesterday. Um, and one of the things that it's doing as well, because it's wrapping GPI opens, if you look at us controlling a GPI open, uh, so let's just have a look here. So when we're setting the LED, right? See how we say mode underscore LED, and then we choose set low or set high. But after that, we have this bit, OK. So what's all that about? Well, uh, when you do something like set low, there's a chance that that might not work. It's highly unlikely. That should never happen. Um, but it's built into. So by calling OK, we, we're just dismissing that. You could call expect with the message that you expect or the error that you expect, but it could raise an error. So anyhow, when the guy that did the bit bang uh, Hal, um, he doesn't handle any possible error. He maps it to the um, to the calling or controlling function. I don't understand all of it, but anyhow. And that really messes with things because you need to define how you're going to deal with that error. So, um, Laurie did find something which was, um, you know, you could make, you know, in the uh, pointy brackets, you could do error equals and then uh, just the empty function brackets. That gets you so far, but it doesn't get you all the way, unfortunately. So in the end, I just got miffed off with it because clearly this sort of thing isn't for average people. Um, that would be far too easy. You need, you know, the supersonic rust badge level um, to tackle something as complex as GPIOs or wrapped GPIOs. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't fathom it. So, um, after spending even more time on that this morning, I kind of gave up and thought, well, let's just do it differently for a moment. I can come back to this when my rust foo is incredibly more proficient to a level required in order to understand what was going on with this stuff. So um, I figured, well, let's just do it a different way. Let's go back. The problem I was getting is trying to use a structure, in the Bitbang's case, it's using 
generics in order to talk about the types and traits. Um, so what I've gone back to, I thought, well, why don't I just use those pins? Because the problem here is if you've got a GPIO, it has an individual type. I know that sounds nuts, but it does. It has an individual type. So if I go and look at us picking up the SCK pin, right? The type that that returns, i.e. the type that SCK is, is PB3 in caps surrounding output, which in turn surrounds push-pull. So there's a nested type structure there. But the outer part of that, PB3, is unique to that pin. So even if I've got other output pins, they are a different type. So I figured, well, let's just use those pins and use the types associated with the individual pins for now, just to see if we can actually get somewhere. Um, and then we'll go back. We'll back up and have a look at trying to fix the other bits later. And I know that um, I've been speaking to Laurie and Laurie's been working on a, another possible method as well, which is investigating, which could give us a get out of jail free card potentially <clears throat> one way we don't need to move the S spi around so what i figured i'd do then so just just to remind where we were so um we, we we've um we've got hold of certain pins so we need the sck pin so this is the clock pin for the serial spi connection between the stm32 and the fpga because we want to program it right we need to use this clock and then we also need a pin for the data um so in that case uh we're using um we're calling it mozzie um which is pb4 okay we i'm not using the miso because i'm not the data's being returned i'm not interested in okay and then the other things that we've got are pardon me the ss pin and then we've got the whole wp reset and done so um what I do now is uh, I, I added the delay in because we're going to need a delay, which I didn't do yesterday. And then we have this sequence. So the first thing we do is we disable the um, the flash. OK, so I set those to high, which prevents the flash being written to. Because we're using the same SPI pins uh, with the FPGA as are connected to the flash. So uh and then we give that a little delay to let it settle make sure we're okay then what we do is we set the ss pin to high we pull the reset down low that resets the fpga and then we pull the uh ss down to low then we wait a delay like one millisecond actually and then we pull the reset high bringing it out of reset with the uh, uh, SS low, that tells it that we're going to program it. It's not going to go and talk to the flash itself and program itself. It expects us to program it. We then have another delay. Um, then we set the SS high again. And then we have another larger delay. And then what I do is I set the uh, data outline effectively zero data down to, that, to out. I pull the uh, chip select line down low, and then I clock out uh, eight cycles of the clock. So I set the clock low, then I set the clock high. And after that, I then take the SS high. Now, the reason for doing that is really just to clear out the buffers in the FPGA. It says you should do that first. So if I look at our old hardware, that's something that we, uh, that we did. Um, which reminds me, let me just check something on that because I was going to double check. Do, 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 do. Uh, no, not that one. What was it? Was it here? Okay. Right, 
So basically what that does is it gets the FPGA, it resets it, puts it in a mode that it expects to receive something. And we also give it a, you know, a, a, a bytes worth of zeros to clear it out. We're then ready to then transmit the real data to it. Um, so what I'm doing here now is on my USB serial, I am now passing in to that USB serial, the USB as I was before. But I'm also passing in addition the SCK line, the clock line for the serial, and the MOSI line, which is the data line for the serial, and the SS pin, which is the enable or chip select line. So let's go and have a look at how I've changed that here. So if I look at the USB um, struct now, the thing I've added here is I've added those clock lines and notice that their type is individual. Yeah. So even though they're all output push pull pins, they're individual because of this on their typing. It's just the way that the Rust GPIOs work with the how. So it's a pain in the ass. So if I wanted to use different pins, I couldn't use this structure. I'd have to change this damn structure, which is insane. But anyhow, let's forget that for the moment. Let's not go there. We'll come back round to that if we ever get this stuff working. Um, so when I set that up, I pass in the USB here. I pass in the S. Um, I pass in the SCK pin, which is of type. PB3 output push pull, pass in the mozzie and the SS pin. Um, and then when I'm building it up, I pass that. I create the uh, struct with those parameters. Then we're off to the races. It's all set up. So it now has access to the pins it needs to in order to modulate it. So you, if you're a member, um what we had before in the poll the poll gets called in the interrupt right and then when it receives something it was actually copying that and then sending it back so i've turned off the sending back just for a second because i wanted to keep things simple um, and then instead of copying across what i'm doing is i'm now calling a send method which i've added to this implementation so let's have a look at the send method so this is a serialization so you pass it in a byte a U8 in this case, and it serializes that bit by bit, MSB first. So let's have a look how that works. So the first thing I do is I set SS low, i.e. the FPGA chip select low, to say we're sending you something, okay? <clears throat> then I have a for loop that goes from zero to seven, effectively. And uh, the first thing I do is I set the clock low down and then what I do is I work out what bit I shall output. So in this case, it's the MSB. Uh, the way that's worked out, seven minus the bit offset, because the bit offset is going from zero up to eight. So in the, the first one, it's going to be zero. So it's going to be seven minus zero. So I'm going to shift the byte uh, seven bits effectively. So I've just got the LSB in the LSB, sorry, the MSB in the LSB position now. And I am that with zero one because <clears throat> I just want the last bit, the least significant bit. If that out, if the result of that is a one, then I want to output a one. <clears throat> I want to set uh, Muzzy high. OK, remember, that's part of this structure now. Hence the self. Um, if it's not one, that means it's a zero, I need to set it low. Self mozzie set low. Remember, that's our data line. Having set that, I then want to take the clock high. This is the sign that the data is valid and it should be read into the FPGA, this bit. So it does that for all eight bits as it goes through bit by bit of that byte. And then at the end, it takes the SS high again. Dead simple, basically writes an entire byte, bit banged. Nice and easy. <clears throat> oh, oh no. 
so what I'm doing here then so when I receive uh, bytes on the serial or USB serial specifically um, basically uh, I go from zero to count the count is the number of characters we've received and for each C each character I then take that character and I send it over SPI Bing that's it that's all I'm doing right now so basically anything I send over serial will end up being sent over in turn over SPI that's all that this program's doing at the moment nice and simple but it doesn't work <laughs> it's not programming my FPGA my FPGA is in a <clears throat> whatever you've done isn't valid mode because my uh, done light is on my red LED so I'm doing something wrong I'm not quite sure what it is and we're gonna have a look at that but let's have a look at what we see because I can show you the logic analyzer as well because I've got a um, I've got a capture from that so let me just see if I can turn that on hold on <clears throat> so here's the logical capture I see when I do that so what what I'm doing is I'm basically initializing the serial port settings and then I'm basically catting a binary file um, it's the trail example um, in the uh, ice core examples um, directory now I'm pretty sure something's wrong because when I look at the data it's not reading it right but the problem is um, it's difficult to tell so I'd expect to see in here 0 7 so 0x7e at some point because that's in the signature um, where have I got that written down somewhere I'm not looking for the signature at this point I'm just sending everything maybe that's upsetting it but we can perhaps do something about that bear with me yeah, it did have this written in yeah so the signature normally goes 7e a a 997e damn it uh, you may have just experienced a cutout I'm afraid uh, it dropped but it's back up hopefully apologies so yeah just looking at that I, what I what I want to see is the signature 7e aa 997e uh, and I'm definitely not seeing that so if I look at this you know I'm seeing 0xbe but it may be reading this wrong because uh, if you look on my capture here I can only see two pieces two lines of information uh, the data I believe is this one uh, and in fact I'm pretty certain it's this one and the clock is this one down here now obviously the clock isn't very um, even but don't worry about that that's because we're a bit banging that that kind of stuff happens but I don't have the SS pin to know when the transaction starts so even though I've got a decoder running on this it may be getting it wrong either way I know it's not working because I mean the first digits I get here is OX80 D1 uh, 83CC
Um, I wonder if I can see this actually in good old binary. Can I do that? Mm. Uh, hmm. Let me just double check the settings for the analysis. So Mosi is the channel one. Clock is channel two. That's right. Uh, most significant bit first, yes. Eight bits per transfer, yes. Uh, clock is low when inactive, that should be right. Data is valid on the clock leading edge that should be right enable line is active low it is but there isn't one present so yeah the analyzers uh, settings seem right but the what it's reading there is slightly off now is that because the data is off or is that because it's not starting in the right place so it's first rising edge is there which is where it's starting from and i'm wondering if it starts before that maybe um bear with me a sec Just got a reply to my eldest. <laughs> right. Um, hmm. Now, could that be shifted? So, what is that binary wise? Uh, hold on. Does that look like in binary? Uh, can I go into what do we do on here? Hold on. Calc. Uh, so if I put in hex and I go. Uh, what is it? B E B E. Okay. So that is uh, one zero one one triple one zero. Hold on. One zero zero. So how is it getting to oh I put B it should be eighty. Right clear. Uh eight E. So that's one zero zero zero. So right, let me just check. So one Zero, 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 one, 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 zero. See, the way that's transitioning there, I'm thinking this may be happening at the wrong time. Um, if that was shifted, might be different so let's look see the other thing is the clock position is most definitely not zero which has got me worried why is that that could be confusing it so let's just go back to the code for a sec let me just hide our um logic analyzer 
I'm not sure that we're doing the right thing with clock state here. So initially when we start off, the clock, yes, here, look, we're clock high. So that should return to zero first. Copy. In fact, I'm wondering, should I have that? So See, the clock should be set low to start with. Set low to start with, and then we should be setting it high, and then setting it low, I think. Then we wouldn't need that, because it always ends on low. It's the first thing, so that looks right. Let's just double check what we're doing in our send. I think we've got it the right way around, so self, set low clock set low uh da -da -da. mossy set high must have said clock set high so that's gonna end on high so we need to set that low as well yeah right so let's do that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run this um again see if it looks any different So I'm just going to quit out of this. Uh, let's say, so it will rebuild that bit. And then I need to get ready on the capture. Um, let me just capture less because I don't really need that long. Let's just do four seconds. Um, okay, so let me run this. Oh, I've broken it. What have I done? Two oh one. So I expected semicolon. Two hundred. Line two hundred. There we go. So it's going to run, so continue, that'll bring the USB up, we're then ready. The other thing I need to do, because it's Windows, is just run putty first, otherwise it has a bit of a mare. Uh, open COM10, that opens it, clears it nicely. Okay, and then if I go get ready on Ubuntu, I'm just going to set it up to output, sorry, on Windows subsystem for Linux, setting up the dev port. Uh, so I'm ready to do that. Let's start the capture. And then do it. Damn it, missed it. Let's do it again. Start the capture and then do it. Okay, can we see anything in here? There's something.
So what are we seeing? So let's have a look at the start. So I'm seeing OX86, OX80, a lot of zeros. Still not seeing that signature I expect. I wonder if there's some junk at the start. These are all zeros. There's a lot of zeros transferred in this file, by the way. Because most of it's not used, because it's a tiny, tiny synthesis. So now I think that is the legitimate start of the packet. Um, but I'm still not seeing that signature I expect. I'm seeing bugger all data, really. I mean, why does it think that this is zero? That's not zero. The data is being modulated here, but it's changing too fast for the clock, I think. We're definitely messing up somewhere here. That shouldn't be zero, right? Why is the data line going up and down? The clock is always catching it on zero, but there's something messed up about that, right? But that may be this that's wrong rather than the um, FPGA, although it's not programming the FPGA, so it's definitely wrong. Yeah, right. Let's double check our code. At least the clock is starting in the right place. Zero here. Although, look at this. What's going on here? It seems to be going back to being high, not defaulting to zero. So it starts off okay, but it goes back to zero. How does that happen? Right, let's just kill this for a sec. Ishii's definitely messed up. Sorry. Um, so, oh, that's SS. Damn it. Being an idiot. But why would the... to change so quickly but not the clock inside that loop let's just save where we are there anyhow put that change into place never know we might get something a bit more um, reliable out Um, I need to do the putty thing again, which is a pain. Open, close, and then set the uh, port up. Okay, then we need to start the cap shout, start, run, Let's see what we've got. Um, let me turn it back on again so you guys can see. Is our new capture. So 
See, now the clock seems to be returning to zero in the spaces. Look, that's a good sign. So I think we may have fixed at least one issue, but not necessarily enough of them. So initially, well, look at that clock now. That looks totally different, doesn't it? That's much more realistic, although it's very short. How long is that? 0 0.1 microsecond, 100 nanoseconds. <laughs> I think we may be pushing it. That's just bit banging. That's how quickly it gets from. Uh, <laughs> that's how quickly it gets from um, the setting the clock high to setting the clock low, because there's nothing in between in terms of instructions in that for loop. <laughs> Might need to insert a delay there. Uh, that's running at. That's equivalent to a ten. 10 megahertz clock, that's not too bad, I suppose. I can't remember what the limitations are. It, it can probably cope with that, I think. Um, however, there might be a problem with um, my settings here, because I think I'm probably sampling at 10 megahertz, but um, let's just ignore that for a sec. So again, let's just look at our numbers. At least the clock looks sensible now. In terms of its relation with the data, although I am seeing some data being modulated here without the clock, that's a bit worrying. And these numbers are, of course, totally useless, not what we're looking for. And then we've got these occasional ones. What's that? That's not occasional one, that's something else. Is that? Now this is still messed up. Now let me just change the sampling rate. Can I go to twenty five? Will that make any difference even? Yeah, device was not able to keep up. I always get this crap. Does my head in? Hmm. Stop. Um it's gone down to 16 that's probably not going to be fast enough but let's try it start run OXDD Most of it's still zeros, right? See, I don't understand this. What the hell is going on here? This is definitely messed up, right? Because we've got, clearly there's data being represented on the signal, unless this is noise. I mean, thinks it's zero because it doesn't have a clock here. And that's ambiguous at best. That is certainly ambiguous.
There is most definitely something odd going on, uh, but I don't know if I'm also maybe seeing some artifacts here of the sample rate. Because that's a, uh, you know, 100 nanosecond. Uh, Maybe I just, if I put a delay in, we might be able to get some more sense. So the question is, how do we put that delay in? Um, can I pass a delay into it? Hmm. Is there a quick, dirty way of doing a kind of volatile loop? Hold on. Seem to remember a, this may be a dark thing to do in Rust. It could be asking for trouble. Uh, let's go. I'm just trying to see uh, a daft use of um, delay. No. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there was one in here that used a loop. Hmm. Damn, you can't find the daft examples when you want one. Um, okay. Can I pass in then this delay that I'm using now that I'm not using it anymore here? Could I pass that in to here? What is the type for delay? Mut delay delay. Let's have a go, shall we? Laurie says I'm running a version that uses the Big Bang Owl library and looking at the pins of the scope. And are you seeing a more familiar signature there, um, Laurie? You can have a look at your code as well today, if you like. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this in here, just in case this is causing a problem. Delay. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this. And I'm going to add in here, delay. Let 
That's right. And we're going to pass it in. Yeah. Okay. So now what we can do is we can do uh, this kind of thing. Slow it down big time. I mean, really slow it down. I'm going to do it here as well. Um, because why not, right? So if I look at my send here, so after we've set the level, I'm putting a one millisecond delay in there. So this is massive delay. This is really going to slow things down big time. It's probably a bit extreme, actually. Um, okay. Um, bear with me a sec, Laurie. I'm just going to try this and I'll come back to you. Wait. I'm just curious whether this actually makes any difference. Let's see. It's taking a lot longer to run, that's for sure. Jesus Christ. Maybe a bit extreme. Still got some oddities going on here. And I'm still not seeing what I expect. Let me come back to that in a sec. Um, so I've added a one millisecond delay in, in, in between the clocks. Sorry, not in between the clocks, in between the data set and the change of the clock. Uh, so what's Laurie saying here? The problem with my variation is it seems to lose characters. The SDK and Mozzie looks reasonable. The scope reports them at about 800 kilohertz. That seems very low speed. I don't have a suitable logic analyzer capture. I mean, I can try that in a bit, um, Laurie. Let me just have a look at this because... Um, my clock pulses are still too wide. Um, I'm putting the delay here. If I did, could I do a delay? Hmm. 
I'd really like two delays and I'd like them to be much shorter. I'm just going to move this so it's actually in the clock cycle itself. I just want to see what that looks like. Bear with me a sec. Uh, let's just quit this. Fast. Okay. Let us see what we have here. I know those clock pulses should be longer. But hmm. data we're seeing is rather different. Uh, I think the data is a bit better at least. Although we still get these anomalies that I don't understand. Maybe they're just glitches. Only two of those, which is better. Um, hmm. uh, I'm going to add another delay just to make sure that the data is valid. But this is going to halve the speed again. Just in case this is making any difference whatsoever. It certainly seems to be understanding it better on the scope, but that's not necessarily um, making it work, of course. Uh, from Putty again. Continue. Uh, let's see. Uh, serial ports. Com ten. Unable. Hold on. Let's see. I think it's my typing. Typing too fast. Okay. Close. Yes, I'm sure. Set up the serial port on Windows Subsystem for Linux. Get ready to cat. Start the sample. Cat. Now it doesn't finish doing the cat, but it just gives me the start bit. But. Let us see what we have. Yes, it's making sense. Look, 7E, AA, 99, 7E, that's the signature there. 7E, AA, 99, 7E. So at least the logic analyzer is now capturing it, despite it's, because it's working at a very low speed. That's the trouble. Um, because it's having USB problems, I think. That's good. So we know we're sending the right shit. So, wait a minute. So what's it? What 
is it uh, sending the start? So it's sending an FF000, zero, 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 an FF. Oh, yeah, that's at the start of the file, isn't it? I remember that. Um, maybe I need to cut that off. That's the first four bytes. Maybe that's messing with it. So then it's sending the signature. And then it's sending the data. And look, that clock actually looks sensible. But it would do, because it's so slow now. But it's definitely not programming the um, FPGA. In fact, it's still transferring that. <laughs> that cat is still running. <laughs> but I think we're getting somewhere. At least we can see something sensible now. We can see that the data we're looking at makes sense. I need to get that delay down. Uh, those first four bytes are empty comment it should be okay well actually being sent to the um i don't normally send those to the fpga i normally wait for the signature and when we and we don't commence actually sending anything over spi until we see the signature so those first four bytes are normally a miss um i don't know if that messes with it or not Laurie. whether we have to try and not do that Um, at least the data is looking sensible now. That cat is still fucking running. Excuse my French. Um, mm, can it really still be running after all this time, or is it hung? I mean, I have slowed it down considerably. Two milliseconds per clock cycle. <laughs> it's, it's a bit insane. Um, 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 um. Uh, I can't see delay milliseconds. Is there a delay microsecond? Let's try that. That might help. How many microseconds should we wait? Uh, let's speed things up a bit here. Um, Ten microseconds. That might be a bit fast. I'm just changing the code to wait microseconds rather than milliseconds for the delay. Uh, um, Let me just um, that cat still hasn't come back. Is it actually still working or has it failed? I don't know if I should give it a few more seconds rather than just cutting it off in its prime. <laughs> this is rather slow. Bugger it. Let's kill it. See if we can kill this as well in terminal. Um, right, so let's do it again. So we're going a bit faster now. Uh, right, let's brought it back up. Uh, Paddy, uh, content. Okay. Nice. 
go back, set up the STTY. Load the cat ready. Start the sample. Cat. Well, it's obviously not finishing in time. It'd be nice to actually return this time. Right, let's have a look at this whilst it's doing that. Make sure we're still getting the data again. Yeah, it's still reading the data okay. And the cat has returned this time. However, the FPGA... Oh! The FPGA, the dun light, has gone out. But I don't see my LEDs blinking. Oh, shit, what have I done? Uh, I'll just reset it now. These wires were a bit dodgy. It's this bloody um, debug connector that's a pain. Sorry, let me just go around that loop again. Reload it. I'm hoping we're getting somewhere here. Instead of rowing backwards. Hmm. Uh, Uh, work that time. It's weird. It didn't work the first time. <laughs> so we're ready to sample. taking quite a long time even with a 10 microsecond clock or maybe it's 20 microsecond yeah but the dun light is going out now which it wasn't doing on the board before that is a nice sign and let's just look at our data I think our data looks good so we're still recognizing data on the analyzer which is nice 0FF00 FF70. I'm wondering if having that stuff at the start is messing with it. What could be the issue? See, this is all looking good now. I like this. This is looking healthy. Um, we could get it to ignore everything. Uh, I don't know if that will make any difference. It might be worth a go. <sighs> T's done. On to the H2O. So on the um, reception here, we could have a filter.
So we could add something in here like prelude. Uh, you may have lost the stream temporarily. I do apologize, but it did come back up. Uh, let me just add. No, we don't need to do that. We do not need to be doing this. Uh, we don't set it there, but we do set it there. Why is that having an issue? True, unexpected. Mm. Not call it prelude then, let's call it um still objecting to true delay true didn't like that for some reason add missing fields pubstruct usb serial Do I have to spell it out then? Hmm. Seems happy with that now. So when it starts, the header is true. Um, if uh, S dot header to hmm. so if we're in the header um
we just continue we ignore it um, if we see 7e so if the head of is true yes the head of oh, what am I doing uh, if oh damn it um if say equals if c equals uh seven e wasn't it to do this as you right if C is semi right if C is equal to Then We need to turn header on. We need to make it false. We also need to send the byte because we need to include this one. Else. Uh, we continue. And it doesn't need that. Still with me, guys. Sorry, my head's in the code here. So basically, what I'm saying is, the so header should start off false. Sorry, it should start off true, right? But if it sees a OX7E, then it sets it to false and also sends the 7E, right? Otherwise, it continues. So that means it will go over the first four. Um, otherwise, if the header is false, it will send the byte. So that should strip off those first four bytes. I'm not sure this will make any difference, but it's worth just eliminating that possibility. And we can see if this actually works. And we can see it on the, um, on the uh, logic analyzer as well. Oh, I 
that was taft sorry i should show you what i've done sorry guys i forgot i did had the analyzer in front so what i've done here is i've added to the structure uh, a boolean called header okay and initially i set that to false that uh, to true so that initially when we're in it we're actually in the header is what i'm saying yeah so when we come to send uh what it does if the header is true then it looks to see if it sees the ox 7 e if it doesn't it just continues so it just ignores the first four bytes until it gets to 07 sorry 7 e when it sees 07 e it then sets the header to false because we're now outside the header we're actually in the uh in the proper bit that we want to send bit of the image for the fpga we also send that byte as well and then because we set the header like this false so any subsequent characters will automatically be sent okay let's run that uh, let's see if cutting that out makes any difference whatsoever if nothing else we can eliminate it from our inquiries as I'm sure some famous um, detective may have said in the past. Um, so let's just set up that. Set up the TTY. Let's go back, sample, and run. Let me turn the um, check analyzer back on for you guys. That's still cutting, by the way. I don't know if that's a good sign. Now it's finished cutting now, and the uh, I haven't I haven't got the LEDs blinking, so it hasn't worked. But what we should see here is a headerless start. Yeah, so it starts at seven e. So we're definitely not sending it 7E anymore. Sorry, we're definitely not sending that FF00FF at the beginning anymore. And we still have the problem. So that's clearly not what the problem is. Um, mm, mm, mm. Mm, and by the way that fix i put in that temporary fix is only going to work we have to restart it every time because that header will need resetting right let's have a think then what else could be going wrong here it could be the prelude i.e the stuff that we do to set that up because i think the transmission is now spot on I don't know if you'd agree with me, guys. Come on, give me some feedback here. Am I doing the right thing? That looks right. Okay. The transmission. Um, let's have a look at the startup. That would be nice. Let's see if it's doing what we think it is. I've got to try and capture the startup. This is going to be fun. So uh, I'm going to start it. Start capture. And oh, damn it. So I've got to start. Uh, start. See what that captures. Um, 
That's interesting. So we're saying we're seeing the data brought down to zero, which we expect. Then we're seeing the clock go low because it starts off high, right? And then we're seeing one edge, two edge, three edge, four edges. Shouldn't we be seeing um, eight edges? Hold on. Oh dear, let me just turn the logic analyzer off, guys, so you can see the code. The bit I'm talking about here is the startup stuff. When we're doing all this stuff here. So the mozzie line goes low here. The clock line goes low. And then uh, select goes low. But our for loop here should run eight times, right? We should see eight transitions from high to low. But in the capture, what do we see? Four transitions. Unless I'm looking at the wrong part of the signal. It's the only part. So what on earth is going on there? Why are we only seeing four? That's a bit bonkers. You need another delay at the top of the loop. Oh, I see what you're saying. To make it look, um, to make the pulses wider. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Thank you, iPost. However, that doesn't really explain why we're not seeing the eight transitions from high to low. Does it? Right, let's just run this again. Get that ready, queue it up, start, run. Oh, that's better. Yeah, no, you were right, spot on. Now, does that make any difference then? Let's try doing the serial thing. Oh, God, I hate putty. Okay. Then we're going to do that. Then we're going to do the cat. We're going to start and then run so we should still be seeing the same stuff here still cutting at the moment yeah that still looks the same Cat's just finished. The dumb light's gone out, but we don't have any blinking LEDs. Hmm.
Okay. Let me just go back and sample that start bit again because I want to just make sure that we're not missing anything. Uh, get ready to run that. Start. Okay. So let's look at the sequence again. Oh, there's a glitch there. Look. Not that that's relevant. That's actually on the mozzie line, I think. Uh, MISO line. So, yes. So let's just look at this logic again. So uh, both our mozzie and our clock go zero, which they do. We expect. Then there's no change in that at this point because I haven't connected to the USB or sent anything. So the only change we're seeing is here, where we're seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clocks sending in zero, which is what we want. Okay. So that looks good. I mean, the good thing is we seem to have made some progress because oh, the done light's gone on now for some reason. Um, I was going to say because we um, because the done light was going off. I don't know why it's come back on. Um, I posted, I can't say how many times I've made that mistake now. Yeah, putting the delay in two parts. So that should be working now, right? We know that bit's doing what we expect. So don't think that that's the problem. Uh, let me just check what we used to do. So we reset. Yes. So we set the flash up so it can't be talked to. We set the SS value high. We take the reset down. We set the SS value low. We have a delay of a millisecond. We then take the set reset high so we're taking it out of reset then we're waiting you know another millisecond no two milliseconds in this case um, then we're taking uh, CS value back to high so at this point, the FPGA knows that it's ready to be programmed. And then we have a delay of 50 milliseconds. Um, so that's the right order, I think. Um, So normally when you program, you do that reset sequence. Then we send these zeros to clear it out. Uh, and we end with the SS set to high, I disabled. Ah. Oh. When we're doing this, I think this needs to be the other way round. This isn't like a normal right. Or is it? I remember there being something weird 
about clearing it out at the start. Um, okay. Also at the end, we normally do a uh, series of writes. which we aren't doing here. Um, there's like, you meant to do like, I think it was like 49 clocks. Um, 152. Okay, let me, so I was looking at the Python coding, which was the last time I wrote this FPGA code. Let me just double check the um, C code sequence, because that might be slightly different. Um, we should be close now, really. Uh, where will I find? that right so in the c code what do we do we do detect word we enable Right. In the C code. What do we do when we finish? I don't think we do anything special. Enable. What does that do? Hold on. We run config. Okay, that's a weird thing. So, I turn him out. It waits for C done. Then it writes one. 
Then it writes seven ones. The other thing it's not doing here, so when it's doing the right, It's not changing the um, CS. Um, at the moment, what we're doing is we're changing the CS with every byte sent. And I think that might be wrong. Um, Uh, yeah, I can push the code. It's not a problem. Sorry. Um, Let me do that now so you can take a look. Um, Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that's pushed, by the way, Laura. You can download that. I'm just going to try something, and then I might have to just refer to the data sheet. Um, I might have forgotten something rather important here. How will I know when I get to the end? Uh, Let's just try something. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing here, guys. Um, I may be wrong about this. I can't remember. But I'm just going to disable the um, TSS. Sorry, the SS, not CSS, what am I talking about? Um, I 
So when we do the polling, right, every byte, I, I'm, I'm basically doing a CS on every byte. And I think, I don't think I have to do that. I'm just trying to remember. I think there might be something weird about when we're programming. That means that we don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to send, I'm going to set the CSS low here. rather than set it in there, but I need to pull it back up at the end. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is um, add Does it insist on camel case? I can't remember now. Um, Hmm, I actually want to set it to um, one here, don't I? I want to set it to five actually. <clears throat> because we've got the the header bytes as well. Um, then every time we send stuff, we need to add, we need to do um, we need to increment. Actually, no, no. No, we don't want to be doing that there. We definitely don't want to be doing that there. I hope that if there's any seven E's in it, oh, this is going to be activated again. Shite. Um, what we want to do is make that right and There is a byte count size. Definitely need a state machine for sure. Yeah, I probably will do.
Uh, Laurie, I think I'm using the right mozzie and miso. I call it mozzie, but it's actually collected to miso. But we can go back and just double check that because I noticed that earlier actually in the day. Um, let me just, I oh, can't find this bloody. Envites, where's Envites? Good image size. In the I'm just going to code it here actually. Um, Um, what we need to do here is we need to we need to set this up, don't we? Reset everything. So we know how many bytes we need to receive, you see. That's important. Um, so I can now take the SS high and then I can also um, reset the header so we're ready to rock and roll next time um, what else do I need to do I also need to do this thing where I send it a bunch of um, ones <laughs> config sequence is it the config sequence So the config sequence does sends a whole load of ones. Did I say it sends? Config, config, config. But 
does it do that before it sets it high? No, it does it before it sets this high. So let's just keep that in there. Uh, so what we need to do here is just a, um, this kind of flushes it out. So we just need to do a, a what do we need to do? What sort of thing? Yeah, that kind of shit. Um, I just realized I'm putting all of this in completely the wrong place. Let me just move this. This does not go there. Um, I need to go in here, I'm being an idiot. So we put this in here and let's just straighten this up. And what we're doing is here, we're going to just send it a bunch of basically um, ones. Right. This is going to be zero X zero one as byte is byte. Um, this just clears it out at the end. So when it knows it's counted in enough of these, uh, then resets the header back to true it sends these ones to clear uh, clear it out and then it resets this back to high so we're then back where we started because that's the other thing because what i was looking at was the wrong um, fpga programming I was looking at the FPGA program I used in Python for programming the ICE 14. I think it's subtly different. Not found in this scope as byte as U8. Um, that be okay. U size. Uh, can I do that as U32? Missing bike counts on oh, 971. Initialization. Oh, 
Oh, being a twit. That is not required. Oh, it wants that, does it? God, that's annoying. That's what you've got with these fussy things turned on. So let's just refactor that. Okay, it's running now. Right, so let's do putty. Com ten. Okay. Set the serial port up. And Windows Linux. Get the cat ready. Start the sample. Do the cat. So the cat's ongoing. It's finished. <sighs> but the FPGA is not programmed. Hmm. Let me just catch up with the comments. Some of guys, I had to try that. So, yeah, I think you're using the right pin. I was using the wrong one. Setting SS in send is wrong, as you said. At the end, you send up to 100 zeros until C done is set. And then set SS low. Then send a few more zeros. Uh, that's on the ice core version. Config is sending zeros, not one. Uh, okay, you int eight t equals zero. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, that's right. So zero. yeah, good point. I read it too quickly. Uh, I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but it makes perfect sense to send zero rather than one let's just make that change see if that makes any difference the putty thing okay get rid of that then do the setup on the STTY prep the cat run the cat Hopefully we're edging closer here. Cat's still running. I might want to try and speed this up if I get anywhere near it. It's finished, but no blinky. Um, so yeah, going back to the config. So what else do we do? So in config, we do what we do. We wait for the, um, so we keep sending zero until C done timeout. Uh, 
and then we do then we send the um then we send seven lots of zero okay i'm not checking c done at this point uh but what i could do is put a delay in here rather than checking s i know it's a bodge but let's delay for a few milliseconds before we send that other stuff out 10 milliseconds it's probably a bit long I remember having this fun before when learning to program this. It's been a long time since I've programmed the um, HX chip, strangely. Some of it's coming back to me, not necessarily in a good way. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Let's get rid of putty. Let's set up this TTY. Let's set up the cat. Sample just in case we need it. I might have to go and get a refill in a minute. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting for the C done, I'm actually just waiting a period of time. Yeah, but that didn't work. Mm. Any ideas, Laurie? Anything else that I may be forgetting? So at the end of the programming, it does. If the end bytes is greater than or equal to, hmm, would that make a difference? Probably not. Change it anyhow. Oh, that should be ninety six, I think. So I've taken off the four bytes. Now mind you, I'm still counting those. Here. When I increment. Right, let me just uh, pause for a sec, guys. I think you have WP and hold wrong. Okay, let's look at what we're doing. I'll come back in a sec for that. Hold on. Bear with me a sec, guys. Just got to refill my water and take a convenient break.
back again more water um, define hold flash how DPIO or right pin Um, I uploaded the code, Laurie, so that, that hasn't changed that bit. But yeah, the WP stuff hmm, should be low rather than high, is what you're saying. I can't remember whether they're active low or high. But in here, you're saying that they... Where do we set those? We run protect flash and hold flash, and you're saying that that takes them low. Okay, let's let's change that code. The other thing that's worrying me, of course, is the miso miso thing. We might want to check that. So let's just change. Um, these because that would be messing with it we could be trying to write to the uh, flash <laughs> probably corrupted it um, hmm let's just change that first and run that that alone may make a big difference then I'll look at the uh, mozzy miso thing Good old putty. What? Don't start with me. Oh, it's because I haven't pressed continue. My bad. Running, not bothering capturing this now. Oh, the LEDs have been set to something, but it's definitely not trail. Oh, you know, yeah, it's working. It's working, Laurie. And I post. And anyone else that's watching. Um, yeah, it's working. The reason that the trail isn't flashing is because I'm not sending it any clock signal. So it's now programming. Um, yes, we need to use a clock. I haven't worked out how to pass the clock through. Uh, we could just use a timer temporarily. I guess. Uh, we've got this timer here, but mind you, would that be able to go to the right pin? Ooh, I don't know. Do we want to go there tonight? Um, could do. 
timer. We set up a repeating timer. It's easy to set up a timer to do an output. Why is there a clock redirect? Let me. I don't suppose I've got the HAL open anywhere, have I? Hold on. HAL. STM327 HAL. Let's just have a quick look. Uh, is there an, a clock setting? RTCS, what's that? RCC? Real time clock. Random generator, no, I don't want to do that. RTC. I don't think it's in the RTC. Well, there's a lot to the RTC stuff. Um, what do we have? Timer, 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 timer. LTDC, FMC, Flash, DMA, Timers. Uh, Uh, setting up a timer. No. Uh, is net example. Uh, what we need, I know what we need, I'll tell you what we could use if there was one is a PWM example, but I don't think there is one in their uh, examples folder. Let's have a quick um, Google search. I missed quite a bit as I was at the shop. But did you have to go out and get some medicine? As in an alcoholic beverage. 
Um, it's working, basically, Laurie. I don't know if you missed that bit. Where's my... Um... Rust. Right, I've just pushed those changes up, Laurie. Beer, yes, yeah, sensible man. It's Friday night, have a beer. Uh, so you can download them. That now works at programs. What I'm trying to work out is uh, how to um, create a clock. I'm trying to remember what pin it's on. Is it like PA10 or something?
<laughs> Just enable this timer. So, what we want to do here is um, what this does is some 32 timer. to PWM how oh, PWM time three I have pushed the wrong code. I know I have. Sorry, I misread your um, thing here. Mm -hmm. Time free.
Okay, so if I get a single pin. Um, bear with me, I'm just trying to set up an output clock. Um, pH one equal to CH one no print. Output. Yeah, I need to increase the clock speed, Laurie. Yeah, the LEDs come on, so it programs it. Trouble is, we've got no clock going into the FPGA, which is why they're not uh, flashing. And I'm just trying to fix that now. We're not outputting a clock signal to it in our code. Uh, what does this return then? That's not right. The example I'm using here is definitely not right. I don't think it knows what type that is. Hold on. Oh, I'm being an idiot. I hope if I actually use the right hal. Doesn't seem to like that. Hmm, something missing here.
There is no PWM. I've got a feeling this is all rather different. Yeah, it is. What I'm looking at does not have a PWM. My how has no PWM implemented. That's why it's not doing anything. We don't have PWM. Which is very odd.
I'm just reading about uh, MCO here. So what they're talking about doing to enable this, let me just do another search. This may be too in-depth. STM pretty to how setting up MC how Oh, I forgot the all important Rust at the front of that. <laughs> I know how to do it in C. Thank you very much. Embedded Rust. We've just found a very nice function that maybe does it for us. Let's just add this in. Assuming this works. It might not. Hmm, I'll see, see import. Not sure if that's exactly going to work, but I 
Um, I need to do it here, aren't I? Um, this was written slightly differently, so, hmm. Uh, maybe we should do something slightly different here. Hmm. See if it actually accepts that. I'm not sure it will. Might have to modify it slightly because I don't know how old this piece of code is that I'm referring to here. Okay, so these are the function assumptions. Uh, these are going to be different for different um
I don't know what they're using here. I don't think that these are going to work. This is very low level stuff, the way that they're doing it. There should be a, probably a better managed way of doing it. Oh, hold on. It's interesting. Because it has more than one on this chip. Um, is it on the same pin though? Holdy, holdy, holdy. Um, wait a minute. Let me just check the pin number here and make damn sure. Ah. PA8. No oh boy. It also doesn't like CRH. Oh, aren't we having fun? I should have looked this one up before I didn't even think about this part of it. CRH. A F R H A F R L It would be lovely to get Blinky working.
Oh boy, this just goes off on one. <clears throat> Maybe another way of doing this. Clocks. Can we do that? Let me just check something here. Clocks dot set no Right. Mm. Damn it. I am in deep here trying to get this set and it's not obvious how to set the uh, external oscillator pass through. This function kind of does something. No. Sorry, we probably lost connection there temporarily, folks. Sorry for this very quiet period here. But I am puzzling on how to set up and configure this clock. Because it will not have it. 
Um, the code I'm looking at is obviously from a while back and a different microcontroller. So I'm getting all sorts of compile errors here. Maybe I'm not even passing the right thing. So this is not you this wouldn't be using the hell this would be using something else this is using it directly I don't know if we can do that hold on saying that that should be Hmm, this should be F7. Oh, what joy this is. sure about using that and using <sighs> so I'm now passing in the right things I think but RPC RPC 
uh, CCP multi. Now the problem I've got is it doesn't like. I was going to uh, the closure here. Right. I uh, I O P A N No. Oh, this is not really. Maybe the style has changed. Maybe I need to specify the bits in here and then set. Hmm. No, this isn't working. I'm going to have to find another way of doing this. Oh, have you found something?
Um, well, I think there's two things you've got to do. You've got to set the MCI, MCO, but I think you have to do something to enable that function on the pin as well. So WMC modify, RCC config modify. I don't think it's going to work. Um, let me see if I can find any more. I'm not quite sure what that bit's doing. Enable port clock. I'm just wondering actually how to see to save my other five. That bit I get. this I'm not so sure about. The clock should already be set, but PA8 
So if I have PA8, hold on, can I modify PA8? I just cheat, hold on. I'm just looking in the um, original code, MyStorm firmware. See what alternate mode we've set this to. GPIO mode AFPP alternate mode is GF GPIO AFO MCO AFPP That's not helpful. Shit. We've only got numerical alternate AF. Hmm. 
Blank F zero. Method not found. What was that variant thing? CCP configure.
Should be RCP. It's getting late because I'm losing my thread here. We don't have cis in our choices here. We only have oh, HSE, HSI, LSE, PLL. Go back to my code briefly. Hold on. Does it do something in the R? CCC.
HSE, I think. I think. That is what happens in the C code, C++ code. Oh, it compiled. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to work. Uh, let's give it a go. <laughs> that was very bodgy, so I don't know if we can have any joy with it. I think we're doing some of the right things, but not necessarily all of them. Oh, that may well have messed with things because the, the, uh, com port isn't coming up now. I don't know what that is, but it's broken something, I think. Let me just rerun it to see if it makes any difference. I'll just check all these connections and stuff. Let's run it one more time. Might be we're messing with things that we shouldn't be messing with. Twinkles, are you back? Hiya. I'm not feeding you if that's what you think at this time of night. Yeah, it's not um playing ball. USB device is not recognized. Yeah, that addition is messing with it big time. Um Must be some other way of doing this very same thing. Um, I don't know what's I'm going to have to look into this a bit more. We always leave these streams with something, don't we? That doesn't damn well work. Um, this is clearly breaking things. I wish we could do it. Let me take that modify. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. Um, there's going to be some more code out there. I think I'm going to call it a day. Though. I think we've got quite a long way. We're programming the FPGA, at least. Um, we've just got to work out how to um, get this... Um, clock output and I'm pretty sure it's this bit that's stopping it working if I comment this out I'll probably start working again better make sure I suppose oh, 
Serial on ten. Yeah, that works okay. So it's definitely breaking it. Adding that clock modification. I'm just going to have to dig in the internet a bit more. If you find anything, um, Laurie, let me know, mate, about setting the MCO. Ooh, okay. It's working. How on earth is that working when I've disabled that statement? All I've done, the, ah, I kept the alternate mode for PA8 in there. So it's taking some default, uh, clock source for that which looks to be rather slow <laughs> <How interesting. laughs> uh, let me just um, commit this I don't know where it's taking the clock source from. It's probably not taking it from where it should be taking it from. Anyhow, I'll just um, commit this, Laurie, if you want to have a look. Um, now when you program it, um, trail works, but it's like working in slow motion. It's not outputting uh, what I think it is. So let me just push that change up. The other thing I'm going to do is try and um, increase the speed of this bloody programming. It takes forever. Let me just do that. Um, I think we need to do more than just set the AF mode. We need to set the clock source for the MCO. And that's not um, clear how we do that. The way that we've tried to do that, it's not happy with. So. Let me just change the um, the delay that we're using. Oh, I've gone straight past it. From ten microseconds to one microsecond. So now the sending should be a bit more rapid. Let me just test that. Can't go too fast, otherwise it stops working. Well, that's what we found earlier. Uh, let's just set this up. Let's see. Open. Get rid of putty. Choose a serial port, configure it. And output, reprogram it. Yep, 
that's a bit faster now so I just commit that I just push that change. So I've taken the clock cycle down to effectively two microseconds. I think we can probably go faster than that as well. I don't think there's a nanosecond version of delay, is there? Anyhow. Have a play with that, Laurie. That should work. Um, I think what we need to do is somehow in the RCC config is we need to set the MCO source. Just like we're doing in here. No, like we were trying to do here. because it's not defaulting to the right clock. I mean, the clock setup is probably rather different from what we did in the C. I mean, it must be working stuff out. So we're setting the sys clock to 216 megahertz. And we're using the HSE clock, which is 25 megahertz. I mean, what I don't know is if the MCO divider is set to one by default. It may be dividing the 25 megahertz signal down. Because in the NCO chain, you can, you can source the clock from different places, but you can also divide it before it goes out to the pin. And we're using whatever those default set, settings are, and I don't know what they are. So there is a clock. But I've got a feeling it's running significantly lower than 25 megahertz. I what's coming out of that um, pin is significantly less than 25 megahertz. But it may be because it's either sourcing it from a different place or. Um, Or it's got the divider on and I'm not quite sure how you'd set all of that I mean you can set it with using these direct things but we we're already configuring the RCC and by doing it again down here I think we may be causing ourselves some issues In the RC section, we need to do something, I'm pretty sure.
There's quite a bit of code here, but they're using the, they're not using the how to do it, they're using the um, registers to change it directly. Enable MCO alternate function. Yeah, hmm. it doesn't seem, I can't see anything in the how to change it. I'd like to be able to change it from the how rather than having to go to the registers and change it because it may be contradictory to what we're doing here. But I just don't see anything about MC0, I'm sorry, M MCO master clock out uh, not sure a second configure works takes a long time it doesn't seem to do anything I did push a slightly faster one line um, hold on. Meow, meow, meow. Wow. Wow. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything directly in the how about um, about that. I'm going to have to have a look in some different places. But at least we have something working. It's just not optimum at the moment. But another cat of the BIM file takes ages and does nothing. Oh, well, that's probably that code that I changed, mate. Uh, this bit here, that's probably not quite right. to allow for a second um, do I need to reset byte count here I do, I need to reset byte count I'm forgetting to reset byte count.
Let me try it. Okay, that works. Let me try it again. Oh no, it won't work a second time because I have to... Oh. The reason it won't work a second time is that I need to run through the reset sequence, don't I? And it doesn't have access to those pins. think meow because I'm not necessarily leaving it in the right state do I have to do the configure again Yeah, I think I need to um, do some extra bits with the other pins. Like put it into reset and that. I haven't done that, have I, here? So I need to move that into this section. In other words, um, this bit, Yeah, and this bit needs to be done again. That's what's missing. I can do that tomorrow, probably, mate. I put it to do in there. Anyhow, we got somewhere. Uh, and then I need to do some more research tomorrow and just work out what the hell um, is missing on the MCO side. But I'm going to call it a day now, Laurie. Um, we can speak on Discord. Probably tomorrow. Yeah. 
it's probably just running at a different frequency, Laurie, like a lower frequency. There's probably some default setting that it takes the clock from, you know, somewhere that's running lower. But the, the way that the clock's internally configured may be different from the way that we set it up with the HAL in C. Setting up the clock is quite complicated. And we're not doing all the steps that we did in the HAL as far as setting the clock goes. Twinkle. <laughs> I've got a cat hassling me now. Anyhow. Uh, let's catch up on Discord probably tomorrow, guys. Thanks for your time. Much appreciated. I will see you soon.